This morning, we're going to be examining the A to Z of commercial transportation in Lagos, especially as relates to some of the official documents that you need as a commercial operator within the state. And joining me right now to shed light on that is a, a friend of the house and a man who's no stranger to the microphone, Engineer Fizz Bolahan Toriola. He is at the Director of Transport Operations for the Ministry of Transport in Lagos. It's nice to have you in the studio, Engineer Fizz Bolahan Toriola. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you very much. All right. It's been a very long while since we last chatted on this platform, but let's begin this conversation by understanding the functions of your office right now. You are in charge of transport operations, am I correct? Uh, yes, sir. So what are some of the responsibilities assigned to that office? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Victor. Uh, transport Operations Department is, the, is one of the technical uh, departments of the Ministry of Transportation as it has to relate to the, the uh, formulation, coordination of all transport uh, policy and program in the state. And these are very, very key to the development of transportation system in Lagos State. Uh, you all know that with the urbanization of Lagos State, you have to talk about motorization, mm -hmm. urbanization in time of population, people moving from rural to the urban area. Right. And this is a challenge to Lagos State. How do you effectively ensure that people move freely within the Lagos State? And these are challenges the department is looking at, looking at the United Nations Habitat Sustainable Urban Mobility. Right. When you have the population, you have to think of their movement with a challenge. Okay. And these are some of the challenges or the, our responsibility of the transport operations so department. you guys you're also in charge and you're responsible for e equally devising policies that relate to how you can tackle transport challenges within the state is that correct yeah that is the key functions of the department all right do you equally oversee the affairs of various transport groups in the state yes yeah it's one of our responsibilities like when you talk about the unions matters yes it is very key and we relate with all of them both NURTW, return amat amato and NATO, NUPENC, you know, name it, and right. NATA. So we relate with all of them all to of ensure them. they abide by the uh, rules and regulations. So of let, let's talk about this unions. relationship. So how would you describe the relationship of these unions with the ministry so far so good? It has been cordial. Well, we thank God that they are now trying to see uh, the challenges ahead of the state because whatever they do also affect the state. You see, when you see, you know, members collecting dues on the road, their members not abiding by the traffic rules and regulation. These are also very important to ensure that we have free flow of traffic. So we are relating with them. We have had a lot of meetings with them to let them see the reason why they must also contribute their quotas to the development of Lagos State. And we thank God they are now seeing reason with us. They are also trying to see what they can do and also talk to their members. Right. Because whatever they do affect traffic flow of traffic. When you look at the number of vehicles on our road, which is very, very key. Right. And I know somebody will be asking that question now that, well, if it's very true that you guys still oversee their functions and you regulate them properly as they should do, how come we still have some of them having rickety vehicles on the roads and uh, it appears nothing has been done to bring those ones out of the road? Yeah, it's key, but that's why we continue to, you know, it's a continuous thing. You keep on talking, you keep on enlightening them. You know, we, we women beings, we tend to forget things easily. Right. And that's why it's of uh, collaboration we continue to remind ourselves our responsibilities and it's very key all right that's why we continue to talk to them i can tell you we are getting i mean good response from them it's getting better day yes. by day all right let's come to the essentials now that is needed for commercial operation uh, in the state so if i want to go into commercial transport business what are the things that are needed as individual or as a corporate organization it goes in two ways you okay see, a lot of people think they can just buy a bus or buy a, a small a car, a, a saloon car. Before you go to taxi, you must have, you must have approval. Okay. So you can, you can just buy it and just go and paint it and start plying the road. No, you see, it depends. The Lagos State is trying to coordinate the activities of the uh, commercial commuter vehicle. Let me put it that way. Okay. Commercial commuter, commuter vehicles. vehicles. You see, whatever you use to commute, to carry passenger from one point to another, that regulation in view of the law. You see, when you look at uh, Schedule 1, uh, section 326, uh, subsection 40. He said before you can operate as a commuter uh, operator, mm -hmm. you must have what you call operator license. Okay. It is very key. So that is what will give you the, 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 the power to be able to use your vehicle for commuter purposes. Okay, so it I must have an operator's op license. Operator license. That is as a corporate organization. All right. So even I want to uh, get more people to operate for you. Mm -hmm. You see, those people will now be under you. 
you see, Lagos State has been divided into about five zones. Five zones in Lagos. So that whatever you are doing, the government can be able to manage their activities because management of travel you know, is very, very key. Now, if you're going to break this down, an operator's license, is it for the or corporate uh, uh, corporate person or can I get it as an individual you see you you can you can you can is in two ways let me just put it down in view of the law like I mentioned is under the uh, subsection 40 of the section uh, 326 of the transport sector reform law All right it is there you see you can get it as corporate is even corporate we can now get more people to work under you yeah. to work on them so that you can be able to monitor the activities manage them even in time of fear they charge be able to control it you see what that means is that that is the approval you get from government like let me let me give you an instance mm -hmm. that was some few weeks ago the operators of the uh e ELA. E -E i'm just about to come to that yes but, but go ahead okay they they you see they have been maybe going to the press to talk about their operation is being uh hampered hampered by the government regulation or policies let me just put it that way and what government has been doing is to work in line with the regulations the regulation is so clear before you can operate you see what they what they have been saying that they are already deploying what apps they are only deploying application right for people to use to get a taxi and those who want to operate as taxi under their platform they must also uh meet their own requirements okay. i don't know if you are getting me so for the uber guys now the the uber taxified and all other e healing services do they need an operator's license yes in view of the law because everything you had all over the world is not only in nigeria you must know the you must get government approval you must meet government regulations so that people to know who and who is in that business you see it's, it's about security and safety of lives and properties of okay. the citizen all right. it is very key all right so beyond the operator's license what else again do i need to to have as a commercial uh commuter operator Yes, after having the after you, the, the the organization, let me put it that way. Because okay. like I said, it's in two ways. Okay. Two. And that's why Lagos State Government is trying to come up with a lot of policy to regulate the activities of commuter vehicle. So there is a department that was established to handle public transport and commuter services in Lagos State. Right. I don't know if you know about that department. I do. They were actually set up to handle commuter business because it's a big business. Because if you one of the principles is that if you want to control uh, traffic congestions you must deploy what mass transit you must have commuter vehicles so if everybody leave their vehicle at home if, let's say look at let, let's give you an instance for mm -hmm. in uk two third of their uh population moved by what by public, public transport, transport. Right. two third that means that you are, you are already reducing the number of vehicles on that road that is one of that's why lagos state is working on that to ensure we reduce traffic by people allowing people to use mass transit use public transport and drop their vehicles that is the way we are looking at now so what i'm trying to say is that once you want to operate as commuter service mm -hmm. you must have a petrol license like i said that is what gives you the approval okay to run then what are the documents you need to have is not my document you need to have except you must have one or two to ease like if you want to run you must have your vehicle registered first you have a red plate number okay that is one two you have your normal vehicle license you have the roadworthiness for six months. That right. is for uh, commercial business because it's about commercial. Then you have insurance is key because you must take care of whatever happened, the risk on the road. So it's key. You must have acting permit or stage carriage. It's so, in two ways. So let me, let's come to that now because that's <laughs> one of the reasons why we brought you to this program this morning. Uh, we've been hearing of stage carriage and a lot, of, a lot of times some of these people call to say, well, <laughs> they stopped. I mean, somebody apprehended him or somebody stopped him and was asking for a state permit and he was just wondering what is this so what is a state carriage permit yeah you see when you look at the number it has to do with number of passengers when you look at the the law transport sector law 2018 okay it is well stated that if you have any commuter vehicle that is above seven passenger vehicle let me put it up that your vehicle carry more than seven, seven passengers. passengers you see what you need to have is a state carriage okay so when you have less less than that you have what hackney permit oh so it is so clear a lot of people have been coming up okay so that means for those who are the healing services they will need a hackney permit. they will need an acne they don't because, need a stage car yes because their vehicle carry less than seven just like what you said so is a commuter vehicle though, but you still have to look at the number of passengers they are carrying so but <laughs> it's not to say that you are supposed to have the two of them you, you can, have, to, you you can, can only have, have one yes at the time at the time because so, they are both uh like it's uh road levies okay something that allow you to do 
commercial business to get a reward. Let so, me put it that way. So if I have a Sienna vehicle, uh, for instance, which is like, is it how many passengers? Six About or seven. Seven, seven passengers. Yes. What, what do I require you, for you that? You need acne permit. I need acne. Yes. So it's only if it's above that yes. that I will require a stage carriage. Yes. So which vehicles should process and obtain stage carriage permit? Any vehicle that has more than seven passengers. Anybody that carries more the than 18 seven passengers. The 18-seaters, the 12-seaters. Yeah, exactly. So what you need to do, you see, that's, you see, a lot of people don't know. You see, in line with it, you see, Lagos State is not doing anything outside the the general pol or national policy of the of the country. All right. Of the country. You see, whatever you are doing, you are trying to adopt whatever you been done, what has been approved. So having a commuter, public transport commuter service department in Lagos is to oversee the affair of commuter business in Lagos State. All right. Okay, but this is for commuting, right? Yes. Uh but would it be right for any of the enforcement officials to now begin to ask someone who's using that vehicle to carry goods or perhaps uh, maybe he's using it for company would it be right for for him to be asked for a stage carriage for me the company is in is, is divided into two you see there's some company that have what called star bus i don't know if you can remember they mm -hmm. have star bus which they some of them use costa you know costa is about six passenger vehicles yes yeah, so they need to six. have they need to have it they need to have it and school bus that carry more than seven passengers. Some of the school bus they use, uh, uh, some of them use Toyota, I has, right. some of them use Costa too, some of them use long vehicle like a uh, mass transit vehicle. I don't know if some of the school buses. Right. So, what they need to have is to have the stage carry permit. So, that is in line with the law, not something outside the, the regulation of the state government. All right, I will allow people to join the conversation very, very shortly. But uh, the stage carry permit isn't it one of each ones, or is it an annual renewal thing? Yeah, it's an annual renewal. Thing. Annual renewal, <laughs> not one of. No. Okay, so at the expiration of that uh, year, you must obtain another one. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes, yes. Lagos Traffic Radio at the six point one FM. This morning we're examining the essentials needed for commercial operation in terms of transportation. And my guest this morning is Engineer Fis Bolahon Toriola who is Director of Transport Operations, Ministry of Transportation, Lagos. All right, so very, very shortly, like I said, I'll allow you to join the conversation. A lot of people that, you know, trying to help, more or less, and they want to drop people there, and sometimes enforcement comes in, you see someone who is uh, trying to drop some people, they use it more or less like commercial, but they are doing it for private business. So what, what's your take yeah. on it? You see, whenever you are using your vehicle to, to get a reward, let me let me say that you must abide by the rules concerning that uh, operations so it is you see when you are people call it car pulling car sharing let me put it that way yeah and as long as they get a reward they must get all necessary document they must also abide they must go to the labor they must go to the bus so not that they'll just stop on the on the, on the road, road and, and start picking and dropping or dropping and picking passenger they must abide by the rules See, it is very clear. They must get all the net documents. It's like a part-time thing, just like Uber so, thing. Okay, so must they have a permit? They because must have they a permit. Created. Yes, that's that's the point. So we need to tell the public this because they would all equally argue that because the government has fortunately banned Ok um, Okada and Keke Mawa, they use it as a, as, a, as a way to attack the government to say, well, what is the alternative? And that these private motorists are helping them out. They'll be using the word help. But the point is, help does not, it's not working because of the policy. So anyone that picks up, whether from a Levi or from the main road, should understand that they require a permit. You must have the insurance because you're picking up innocent passengers and you're taking them to God knows where and nobody can check you out, know whether you're a real person or whether you're a murderer or anything like that. So they must be known and they must have a permit. And if last month officers should come in them for not accessing the proper papers and documentation, there shouldn't be a, a crime from right. the public. All right, then. Thank you so much, uh, Angela Duyoye, for adding your voice to the conversation this morning. You're welcome. Great. Now, but let's break this down, Angela, so real, like, before we begin to hear from the people out there, too. And that is, um, if I want to do this on a benevolent basis, should I, should I get a permit? I mean, I'm just coming in or I'm driving past. I've seen... A whole lot of people out there i have an eight seater or perhaps a seven seater like the sienna and i want to help i don't require a permit for that don't you think so you see as long as you see when you look at the law the law i'm is, not collecting money from them yeah one. mr victor you need to look at the law the law is it whatever we are doing is about the safety of lives and property and even the security of the passenger you are carrying which is also very key 
See, one of the reasons why public transport and commuter service was uh, was established to ensure we have adequate data of all commuter operators. Adequate data. I knew that you are getting me. Right. And this can be this can lead to our security. So from there, you're able to get the, the operator of such a vehicle. So everything we are doing, you see, it's all over the world. If you want to do somebody, a lot of people have approached me. They are, they are doing Uber for part time, maybe when they are going home, they will pick passenger when they are Maybe when they are going to the office, they will pick passenger. Mm -hmm. They will charge a. They will call it a minimal fee. Right. As long as you charge minimal, the law is very there. As long as you get a reward, like you, you say you want to do it. Yeah, but you are not getting a reward. Not get, you see, as long as you want to carry passenger, mm -hmm. is that you have to look at the safety. All right. It's key. The safety aspect is there. If you want to not to carry, not to, but abide by all the rules that govern that operation, because those people you are carrying the responsibility of the government to protect them. Right. So it's very key. No, but, but I mean, wouldn't it be unfair if I'm coming from Victoria Island, for instance, I've taken some people from my office and they want to alight at the lay-by at Oworo and then the last month officials confront me to say, where's your license? Don't you think that's unfair? You can, like I, like I said, a lot of people do NGOs, uh, corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. They give out, they, they render service without collecting a dam. It is good, but you must abide by the rules. They must register. You see, if you are, if you, are, if you want to establish an NGO, you must still register. Are you aware? Right. That is the security aspect of it. <laughs> okay, then. Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. We're going to take this uh, dialogue much beyond the studio to also hear from you out there. W what's your take on uh, all of this? And um, also, if you're having some areas, some gray areas that you do not understand yet in terms of how it should all work, you can uh, share your thoughts with us this morning on 0809 912 -0777. All right, the first caller on the line already. Hello there. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning. This is Promise. I'm calling from Ogba. Nice to hear from Promise. Go ahead. Uh, what, whatever your guest is saying there, um, I, I truly agree with him. I, I want to say something. Mm -hmm. Because if there is any uh, uh, customer line, because sometimes you, they send their officials to go, to go out to do their job, and they do something else. Is there any line we can call, somebody can call to say, if they are not doing the right thing? Because sometimes it happens, like I've seen a situation in Ogba, where police has, has they, they, they asked them to go and guide some, somewhere. And when they see, in the night, they see orange bus pass, they will follow, and call them, they will see people parking, leaving their, where they used to stand, go and see, they will follow, see any vehicle, turn any vehicle, they will just go and call them money and come back, just like that. Okay, all right. And I, and yes, and I want, I want, I want to, well, I want to, I also want to say, I see, I've seen policemen. We are not safe in this country. You will see them. They go to where they sell this paraga. They drop their gun. They smoke. They drink. That's why we are not safe. They don't go around shooting people in here. Okay, all they, right. They even drink more than those area boys. Hmm. All right, all right. I'm sure that uh, we will try and see how we send that to the appropriate authority. But thank you so much for your own contribution. If you have any areas of clarification too that you want to seek from my guest this morning feel free to join us hello there good morning hello good morning all right what's your name good morning, sir. my name is kunle kunle where are you calling from uh, i'm calling from ikeja i would like to ask um engineer to your question just in line with what you actually mentioned earlier as regards the benevolent person mm -hmm. if you are uh, if you have your colleagues in the office who probably going through the, your area of, um, of residence and you are picking them after work going home and actually drop them by at the bus stop are you also are you should you also get such permit because they are not doing it for a business or anything you are closing from work and you have colleagues in the office that are going your way what happens at the end of it okay all right that's my question thank you uh, i'll just allow you to answer that right away uh and that's that's cash car sharing you see, if you're not stopping at bus, carefully, okay. thank you. You see, if you're not stopping at bus, maybe from your home, from your street, and you go straight from your home or your street down to the office, no problem. I don't know that you are stopping at bus stops to bus stop. I don't know if you're getting me. Okay. You so must have that vehicle that registered. Permit. You must have it so that you can have your details. You see, by the time you start stopping at bus stop, it's a different thing. Bus stop is meant for you to just, you know, pick passenger or drop passenger so you must abide by the rule it's for our own security aspect of it so we need to do the notary so if you are from your home maybe my wife my children my cousin from home 
and I took I took them to straight to the office or drop them along the line. Mm. Not that I'll, I'll start stopping at bus stop to bus stop. I don't know if you see people. They will start dropping people from bus stop to bus stop. You have turned that they put into commercial purpose. Maybe on a part time note. Even though there's no reward. You, you see, that was the sincerity <laughs> of myself. That was the sincerity of right. I have a lot of friends that they, they, they have asked this question for right. me too. They said, so, well, I'm just carrying them. But I, I just do whatever they give me, token to fuel the vehicle. I don't know if about it. To fuel the vehicle. They say token. To fuel the vehicle when I'm going to the office, when I'm coming from, from the office. We all see all these things. So they need to be registered. So they need to have their data. All right, let's see here from you this morning on your side mirror. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Adeyemi. Adeyemi, where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from Eriko All right, go ahead. Yes, I want to ask um, this is for a question. The last call I just say what I want to ask, but you didn't get it right very well. Assuming. Okay, I'm I'm driving a Senna, mm -hmm. and and I'm I'm inside the Senna with my family because this thing is causing a lot of issues. All these last time use as opportunity to be embarrassing people. And I drive the Senna, I go with my family, and I want to drop my family to the post so they can get a post because we are going on a different direction. Okay, and I can't stop there on the road. I, I need to bust up our name to drop people, not for only commercial vehicles. Uh, not for the commercial vehicle. Right. You don't expect I have to drop anybody and his friend or his family, and I'll not stand on the road and drop them. And I hence said to the bus stop to drop one of my family, you want to get to another destination. What happened? Am I, I, I going to get arrested for dropping someone, someone in the bus stop? Okay. Pertinent question. Thank you very much, Adeyemi, for that. And Naturella, back to the same question. Is this the safety? You're not dropping people from point to point, from one bus stop to another. Just a bus stop. You have said it. Your family. We all know. You see, we so, all know. So that's allowed. It's allowed. We all know. Yeah, but what I was saying that the interpretation of that for a last mile official, he doesn't want to know if it's your family. He, as long as you are dropping someone at the bus stop and it's a seven seater bus, he might want to ask you where's the permit. You know, last mile they have been trained to recognize these people we are talking about. We all know. We are all, we are all part of this society. We know who is dropping his or our own family. We know who is using the vehicle. To do commuter business, we all know this. All right. Once you see a family man, you they, they have a way, they have a criteria. You know they have been trained, woman intelligence, so they know. So you are not going from one bus stop to another. Like I said, you are just dropping your family at one bus and you move. They know you'll be well uh, disciplined to go to the layby, talk the pass. Not that you just stop on the road. You want to stop on the highway to pick passenger. It's an affair. You are a private. Or you are a commercial operator. Right. You must go to the bus stop. Okay, that that, that would uh, get back get us back to promises uh, question. You need a line if there are infractions because sometimes this kind of issues require interpretation. But well, let's take some more calls from you, Lagos Traffic Radio, at a six point one FM. Hello there. What's your name? Yeah, it's uh, Shokunbi on the line. Yeah, Shokunbi. Yes. All right, where are you calling from? And asking for me because on asking for me, it is written uh, carry. Okay, so you want to know the difference? Hello, Shokumbi. All right, the network has knocked him off, but I think we got the import of his uh, question. The difference between uh, stage carry, uh, stage carriage permit, and the hackney permit. All right, I think you've mentioned it earlier on yes, before, yes. but yes. you know, for uh doubt let us uh, hello hello there yes, sir. yes good morning yes this is Dakpo. Dakpo, how are you doing fine all right let's hear yes. from you yes i listen very well to the engineer in the studio and i also listen to the the pm of uh, last one yes. and i think i had handled situation of this kind before you see laws are simple to state now, the officers who apply these laws, it is easy in the office to say, this is what you are going to follow. However, in practical terms on the field, it is totally different. Hmm. For instance, like the other two class said, I dropped some of our staff from the office and some people within the office complex. And also, my son is a copper, usually, on my way home, I pick him at the piano end because he works at the quarter. Okay. That's where he's observing his service. Right. So when he gets to the I stop by to pick him. Now, 
this interpretation of assessment in which engineer Toriola is talking about is not given as easy as he's saying it. And you will get a situation in which in every setting you have to that amongst the disciples. Right. In every in as it is, you have some different officers. But some of these officers that want to abuse and take benefit of, of opportunity will take you through hell, especially at the moment in which you are helpless. That's one. Okay. Secondly, it is not, although he has clarified, but it will be an irresponsible thing for any law-abiding citizen to stay on the road saying he wants to avoid being apprehended at the bus stop in dropping uh, any member in your seat. But, you know, one thing we should realize is this. Laws are made for men. Mm. Men are never made for laws. Thank you. All right, then. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. Uh, he's calling in from uh, Lagos here. And, of course, he's trying to just look at the context and how real it could be sometimes uh, in terms of the interpretation of the law. All right. I, I know that uh, in Nigeria, you still clarify this for us because when we have issues, especially on the roads, as it relates to how this should be implemented, uh, you'll still break this down for us. But let's just take some more feeds from you this morning on your side mirror, 0809 Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ken Dave. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Edbeda, Lagos. All right, Ken Dave, let's hear from you, even though there's an echo where you are. Oh, okay. Can you hear me better? Well, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay, so... I'd listen to you carefully. Let's be technical about this thing. Mm -hmm. I want to ask some questions. Go ahead. Engin engineer. Yeah, good morning. Morning, sir. Now, I'd listen to you. This is Lagos. Let's, let's understand this clearly because some of your men, the way they ask could be very funny. Now, you're saying this because they're going to jump on your words and start acting today. Now, if you're saying I cannot pick my colleague, from the office and drop them at the bus stop where do i want to drop them i don't think i need a permit i'm sorry i'm just saying i don't think i need a permit to actually pick up because there's one there is no okada two there is no keke and i have people going my way on the same address and i'll drop them at the bus stop and move this is a drop off of I'm not picking. If I'm dropping, I'm picking. is a different thing. It's just a drop off, and I drive off. Get a vehicle, go to where you're going. And you're saying no, 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 no. If you're dropping, you must get a permit. What is that permit called? Why do I need that permit? Because I should be able to pick people, not people, people that I know. That you could say, hey, if you're dropping this person, do you know this person? What's the person's name? Because I think that is where we come to. Now, let's go to commercial. Now, how come you people do not regulate these buses when people are going, rush hour, people are going to work in the morning, like from Yanopaja, you see them collecting 500. When it gets around 10, that same people collecting 500 or 400 will come down to 150. They are going to Yaba. How come we don't regulate prices? I just, we don't see anything, we just keep quiet. When we close from office, some people are coming back, you see them hike, hike the price. But yet, you collect, we collect these permits, we collect all these things, we do all this, but we don't regulate prices. Why? Okay. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that's back to Ingratoria. How come the ministry is not taking issues that relate to stability of prices very, very seriously? Yeah, I mentioned it when I was discussing, when I was uh, giving information about the commuter uh, business in La Lagos State. Mm -hmm. I mentioned about uh, Lagos State that been doing to five zone. One of the responsibilities to for the effective management of those uh, commuter vehicles and also the the the, the, the fear they charge um, and control of the fear they charge. Know that they in the morning they collect nine hundred, off peak they collect two hundred. And pick again at nine, they collect nine hundred again. No, everything must be regulated, just like what you said. So you guys are trying to regulate. Yes, it. yes. Yeah. Well, there's no proper enforcement yet. Yes, yeah, that's why we are trying to regulate to know who and who are doing or operating commuter business. Uh, business in Lagos State. It's very key. One of the things we are looking at so that you can have a a, a uniform uh, fare. 
charged by the operators and you said about picking and dropping you see we need to get it clear okay when you are picking you see the way people those people who are using such a vehicle for uh for business who collect rewards you know the way they operate all right people will rush there and they call but if you are just dropping dropping people you want to pick your son for example somebody mr that was here you want to pick his son as maybe yano paja right or at yano Uru. you are picking just one person and the person enter your vehicle and you are going you drop somebody your colleagues government encourage uh car sharing right Good. you are just you are you are from a place whether you start going to bus stop to bus stop to pick to pick to pick to drop to drop yeah to drop. I, I don't think he's in he's in disagreement with what you're saying yes actually. but he's talking about the interpretation and the enforcement by some of these law enforcement officials well let's hear from you hello there good morning hello hello good morning yeah, good morning. Uh, this is last time I'm for Salami for my team. All right, Salami, what's happening within the Mile 2 corridor? I'm uh, uh, having a good. Uh, just to give you a flash of it. Okay. Uh, so the rush hour has subsided uh, for now. A uh, good movement. I'm coming from uh, Ijecha, moving towards Johnny Mile 2. I'm uh, pushing the top of the bridge and uh, slowly down a bit. After the bridge descending towards our signal barrack, as soon as I we we'll see how it goes. Okay. Away from on top of the bridge, I'm moving towards Johnny Trinity and on the wall, uh, we have it better. Fantastic. And from our uh, signal barrack, moving towards Johnny Suralaba, a uh, good movement. Good. And some Johnny from Suralaba, we we'll see how it goes, all through. Right. Uh, so a pocket of traffic that will only slow you down under the bridge at Alakija. Right. After Alakija, we have a good uh, in what journey Abuliadu. Uh, why the sun journey from Abuliadu uh, looking still looking good and uh, no record of any major impediment. Alright then. Uh, all the minor ones have been, uh, been cleared out the road. Wonderful. Alright. So uh, uh, sorry, uh, why are you entering my two through Seven Rainbow? Uh, so you come with Apple Junction, uh, we have good movement. Uh, why do you run about activities at uh, Apple Junction? Uh, we only slow you down. I uh, know the traffic lights are not working. Uh, men or manual. I'm uh, coming from inner part of the uh, to to link up with Apple Junction too. Uh, before you get to the roundabout, you slow down a bit. Occasion by the station going on there. I'm coming from our first start, using first start link bridge. A good movement, all through. And before you get to the roundabout. After the roundabout, we have it good. I'm moving in what journey? Synergy. I route a double junction. Our roads are now very much uh, motorable. Right. I do we still have our uh, monitors. Uh, Moving in and out of the zone to ensure all is still well. Okay, then. I've uh, seen changes. I uh, will you go back. I would appreciate that. Thank you very much, Salami. Uh, thank you. Okay, reports covering the Mile 2 corridor as well as the Lagos Badagro Expressway is still looking very, very good at the moment. No worries at all. So, what I'm just trying to say there is that is the implementation in terms of enforcement. Uh, you could have the high handed officers out there uh, who just sees a drop off and he says, well, because somebody is dropping, Enforcement will not waste your permit. So that could be the issue, and that's what that boy is saying when he was making that contribution. See, that is the idea. They have access to the uh, uh, manager's number, like the GM number, my number, or other top management uh, staff okay. of the okay. MOT or agency in charge of various responsibilities. All right, for so we'll complain. give those numbers before we wrap up on the program this morning. But let me see. Uh, let's take uh, a few more calls before we begin to wrap up the program uh this one is 0809-912-0777 and we're still talking um at some of the requirements that are needed for commercial transportation in lagos and most of you have been speaking you've been making up uh, some of your verdicts and what you make of this but you can still have your input as it relates to this let me take this break quickly we'll be back Lagos Traffic Radio and 6.1 FM. Very, very wonderful and engagement we're having this morning. But of course, time not really our friend. So, how do I get a stage carriage permit? Where do I go to if I'm going to get one? Uh, you go to the Office of Public Transport and Commuters at the Department in the Ministry of Transportation. And you 
once you get there they once you pay they okay give it to you what about the hackney permit hackney permit is still with the motor vehicle and fishing agency is an agency of the mot all right so once you, you need that you can go there all right so for those who want to really get some of contacts i mean really you have some infractions with some of this interpretation of the law and what we should do at every point in time people have that kind of issue what numbers can they call really yeah, if it has to do with what we have been discussing they can get me on my uh, mobile line 080 uh, 34 00 and you can also get in touch with the gm last month for last mile issues that's right and i'm going to give you some last mile lines right now that you can reach as well all right, but uh, like he said, if you want to also have, find out some more in terms of clarification, you can reach Engineer Toriella on 0803-400-6683. Now, for LASMA, especially the one that relates to infractions, you can reach them on 081-299-28503. That's 081-299-28503. You can also get them on 081-299-28469. That's 081-299-28469. And the last one is 081-299-28490. 081-299-28490. But we have to go now, Engineer. Please go down to Rila. What's your pardon thought to our people? Uh, I just have to appeal to the motorists and negotiations. That they should abide by the traffic and regulation to ensure people of traffic on our route. Right. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. Great. So I've been speaking with Engineer Fis Golahan Toriola, who is Director of Transport Operations for the Ministry of Transport right here in Lagos.